Hello. How are how is everyone doing? Doing pretty, good. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, awesome. <laughs> we're recording this on a Friday afternoon, and it's well, it's not that nice outside, but you know, it's just no. bringing a good energy to things. I think mm -hmm. Fridays always do. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Glad to be with you both, and thanks to everyone for joining us for the very first session of our um, Flex course on Ghost and creating your newsletter with Ghost. Yeah. Um, Today's session is called What is Ghost? So we're keeping it real basic just to start things out here. Um, you may have noticed in our marketing for this, as well as you know, just joining us today, that we've done this Flex course before. Um, this isn't new to us. It's not new to those of, uh, those of you who've been following us. Um, but there's actually, there's a pretty solid reason why we wanted to do it again, beyond the fact that we at Reclaim really love ghosts and we have lots of, you know, our age old reasons for it. But um, if you've been kind of paying attention to the latest and greatest on the web, you may kind of have an inkling as to why it's particularly relevant now. Um, and so we'll talk through some of that, uh, kind of why some of the, the juicy gossip around <laughs> why we might want to be talking about this again. The, the and, hot infrastructure goss. <laughs> <laughs> the hottest of goss. Um, and then what, a little bit about how we use it at Reclaim and then how we think um, you might be able to use it, you know, yourself if you are interested in either starting a newsletter or switching up your newsletter platform. So with that, I'm going to take it over to Taylor. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the, 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 the really relevant thing that's been happening now since, I don't know, last, or I shouldn't say happening now, but uh, has been written a lot about now in the last few months is um, sort of Substack, um, and which is a, is a pretty easy to use um, and starts at free um, newsletter platform. So if you're unfamiliar, uh, it's, it's a Substack. You can go there. You can make a free newsletter. Um, and then I, they're paid stuff. Like if you want to have a paid newsletter where you have subscribers pay for it, they take a, a chunk of that, of course. Um, and then that you can also do things like map a domain to Substack and, and things like that. Um, but it is a proprietary platform. So basically if you want to use the software that is Substack, it's a software as a service thing. So you go to their website, you pay them, um, and, uh, you're, you know, uh, using, their tool on their platform by their rules. Um, and uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of newsletters that are run on Substack and um, there has been a lot of enthusiasm for that platform um, because I, they did, I think, do a lot of things right um, when creating it in terms of maybe ease of use and, and the pricing, I think, model seems fair. They did a lot of like appealing to uh, independent journalists and the idea of like, hey, you know, the ad market is crumbling. And even when it wasn't, wasn't necessarily the best thing for journalism or the internet or pre-internet journalism, I guess. Um, and, um, you know, why don't you get paid for your work? Basically. I think that's a great point about the strong beginnings of Substack. And I remember having, you know, at least a couple friends who were very proud when they moved over to Substack and were like, you know, maybe they had content they were posting on Instagram and they were like, I want to get away from Instagram. I'm going to go to Substack. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, that was their, like their move to feel like they were more in control of their, of their content. And yeah. at the time that was like, that was a pretty legitimate move for them. Well, and, and in some ways they were right. Like one of the things, it's funny, like we, we talk about this a lot and sometimes we even talk about it directly with customers. And I, was, I literally came from something where I was to this. Um, and like, the, you know, there, there's nothing inherently wrong about a proprietary platform, but there are trade-offs and risks. And those trade-offs and risks are different than the ones that you have with an open platform. Um, and that's kind of what we're here to talk about in, in some ways of like why we are basically always going to advocate that it's the smart move to go with open tools. Um, and so the, the thing with Substack is there was a lot of controversy recently about Nazis on the platform and, you know, uh, people posting 
harmful stuff basically on the platform and should that be allowed you know and all that stuff and i mean we're we're pretty uh, at, at reclaim we happen to have a pretty uh you know a, a policy that, that basically says like look we we anything harmful we can and will remove from our our services and you're welcome to go host those things elsewhere um and in some ways that conversation is a lot easier that policy is a lot easier for us to have because we're a hosting company that hosts open tools, right? So you you can take your stuff and leave um, if you want to. Um, but that calculus is very different with a large social media platform or a large proprietary platform. You can't take your Facebook profile and host it on somebody else's Facebook. Like, no, only Facebook is Facebook, right? And same thing with Substack. Right, so only Substack is Substack. Now they've made some promises about allowing folks to like export their list of subscribers and things mm -hmm. like that. And again, kudos to them. That's a really great move and a customer-centered uh, move. And frankly, if they didn't allow that, God, I can't. <laughs> it yeah. seems like a horrible idea to do business with them. But but that's great. Um, but you know, the, a lot of the, the controversy about who's on the platform and you know uh, their stance was, hey, well, we're we're Substack. We we have to allow everyone to have a voice, no matter how harmful that voice may be. Um, not one I agree with. Not one a lot of people agree with. Um, one thing and, I also am thinking about is uh, that they one of the benefits of Substack, as I saw it, was that there was a sort of network effect of your, on Substack, your content will be recommended alongside other popular newsletters or alongside relevant or similar newsletters. Substack has features to make that happen. And people saying, I don't want yeah. to be, I, I don't want to be listed alongside. Yeah, yeah. That what are you doing? Uh, and Substack going, well, you know, we, we want to give everyone a platform that we, we actually, we did a whole stream about this a couple months it's, ago. Yeah. But. We won't, we won't go into it too, too much more, but it's a, it's an inherent problem with that model, right? Yeah. It's an inherent problem with that model. When you're the only game in town for your particular thing, you are by default, you have a, a different, you're going to look at things differently, basically, is is what I'd say there. Um, so, uh, a couple things, if in case uh, you want to read more about this, in a couple different ways, um, I would highly recommend Platformer, which is actually a, a newsletter about like social media platforms, tech platforms in general. And um, but they they were on Substack and they left um, to uh, go to Ghost. Um, which is what we're going to talk about today. I think this um, this bio, or this uh, subtitle kind of explains it all. Like we've seen this move before, we won't stick around to watch it play it out. And the, the, uh, no, we're not going to go through the whole article, but you know they're basically like, look, like we if we're on Substack, we have to play by their rules, and that doesn't really make any sense, basically. Um, and so they they go into all of this. It's a very good read. I would highly recommend checking it out. Uh, we've got the link on screen, um, and uh, yeah, it's a very well written, well informed article. Another one I would really recommend checking out is um, uh, Molly White's newsletter, Citation Needed, which is fantastic in general. Um, but uh, Molly also made the transition from Substack to Ghost, and in uh, Molly's case, it's a self-hosted, so like we're going to do in this newsletter, uh, version of Ghost. And this one's really interesting for a lot of the same reasons. Um, one of the things I like a lot about Molly's writing is the balance between sort of philosophy and the technical um, and, and kind of where those meet and what it means and being kind of direct about it. So um, it goes into sort of what Substack is, like why what, why make that move? And some of them are things we talked about. Some of them are just general, like having ownership. Some of them are not being um, on a platform that's backed by, uh, you know, a large uh, in, uh, uh, 
venture capital firm, things like that. But then Molly goes right into like the, all right, here's why, and here's all of the technical steps that I did to get my stuff out of Substack and what I needed to do to set that up and all these things. It's, it's very elaborate and um, it is kind of, in my opinion, in some ways, even a, a somewhat technical cautionary tale of like, you know, does Substack let you take your, um, your uh, subscribers with you? Yes, <laughs> but uh, getting a list of subscribers out of Substack and doing anything with that is is can be a challenge. So if you're starting a newsletter from scratch, you may want to go with the open thing to begin with. Is what I would argue. Um, and and what do we even mean by that? I guess is probably the what what, what what's open about Ghost. So uh, Ghost is a open source. Um, publishing tool. Um, it's a, it's for great for blogging and newsletters. It is very specifically designed around, especially nowadays, newsletters in particular. Um, Ghost can be uh, self-hosted and it also is available via the company uh, Ghost to be hosted through them. This is very much like WordPress, right? The difference between WordPress org the open source project and open and wordpress.com a hosting platform for that project um, you can host it there you can host it with them you can of course host wordpress with us on say reclaims shared hosting or reclaim press um, or you can host it with a different company same thing with ghost so you can host it with them their pricing starts pretty reasonable. Um, it, it is kind of limited, like their, their hosting only lets like one login unless you pay for their much more expensive plans. Um, and so some people do go with this, um, but uh, and honestly- there's definitely benefits of doing that, you know? Sure. Uh, if you're looking for like better, well, like, they're the experts. They're, They're the you're experts, hosting exactly. the platform. You're hosting your newsletter with the people who build the platform. So yeah. if you put in a ticket, they built it. A lot of right. the technical stuff we're going to do in session two, you don't have to do, right? Because right. Um, so for instance, we're going to talk about how to set up Mailgun to send mail. And um, one other thing you would have to do, we're not going to touch on it because frankly, we haven't done it ourselves. Um, but uh, you, if you want to take payments for your newsletter, you would set up Stripe integration or an alternative. And they have that all taken care of. So if you want to have a newsletter that has paying subscribers, you don't have to set up really anything other than your domain name for Ghost. Um, so you get kind of the benefit of that like proprietary almost soft touch, right? Where you don't have to get as in the weeds with everything, but mm -hmm. at the same time, you can still move your stuff out the way you can with like a wordpress.com hosting account. And you can, you know, it's very easy to move from that to a different hosting provider um, or to a self-hosted option. Um, it, so it's yeah. very much not like, you know, locking yourself into something, but you still get the benefit of some more uh, expert level uh, support around it. Yeah, and it's it's a crucial and I think important thing. Like I personally really love this business model, right? Like they're um, they're not the only contributors to Ghost, but they are the major contributors. Is is it, it and and they sell hosting for it, and that's great. And then that lets you know um, companies like us who specialize in other markets, right? Maybe smaller um, sites educationally focused things, uh, working with technologists who are also working with with like faculty and students. Um, it, it, it enables a lot. So I'm a big fan of this type of, of and tool in that a way, can work in this way. We can kind of turn um, the platformer line on its head and say, we have seen, we've watched this movie play out and we do like it. <laughs> it's a good movie. Uh, yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, so that that's, I, I think that the fundamental difference here, right, is, hey, you're using a tool that you're not locked to a single company. And this is one of those things I always say, like, if you're watching this, you've probably heard of Reclaim Hosting. Maybe you like some of the work we do. I hope you do. I think 
we're a good company to work with. Um, but you shouldn't take our word for it. <laughs> like, like you should own the tools that are most important to you, right? And if you're writing a newsletter um, and ma maybe even making money on that newsletter, you have to think steps ahead here. What would I do if, you know, ghosts pricing changed drastically for their for their hosting product? What would I do? Well, I would just host it someplace else. It's a pretty easy question in that case. So that's why we think this stuff is good and to use and is empowering. Um, so that that's what Ghost is on a on like a high level. Um, and you know, if you've used a content management system like WordPress, it's going to look familiar in some ways to Ghost. So you know, we'll 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 go into like how to use Ghost, um, but. Um, and in like the back end stuff, but uh, maybe we want to talk about like how we use it here at Reclaim a little bit. Yeah. Um, and Amanda and I can sort of hop in on this because we are both uh, on this sort of the same and different a angles. Um, Amanda, you do more work with our announcements blog. I do sort of more management level stuff for our new monthly newsletter, but Reclaim runs uh, two different ghost instances. Uh, one is the roundup. It comes up, it comes out once a month on the last weekday of the month. Um, and that's it. Uh, and then there is also the blog and we'll get to that in a second, but the blog is our sort of uh, breaking news announcements. Um, and the roundup is meant to be a collection of everything that's happened over the course of the month. You don't have to tab back and forth, Taylor. I'm not gonna make you do that. Uh, but the, the roundup is meant to be a collection of, um, there's all of the announcements for the coming month. So our uh, new product launches, our upcoming events, this flex course. And Taylor, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see this flex course in the announcements for, yep, yeah, there it is. Uh, uh, you'll see this, this flex course in the announcements for the March roundup. Um, we have uh, any new support guides that come out in the month. We'll do that. Uh, our streams, all the streams from the past month and a schedule of the upcoming streams, blog posts that we've put out, staff picks. The roundup is meant to be like, if you only see one thing from us this month, make it this thing because it'll have everything. Um, but the, uh, so that makes it good for a sort of, you know, we put it out once a month. That's a very sustainable schedule for us. Reclaim the blog, like I said, that's more breaking news uh, type stuff. Yeah, Reclaim the blog is more, has the opportunity to be more breaking news, but it also, um, like you can see the top thing that we have here since, you know, as of today is um, Noah, our uh, top security agent, uh, is had po posted something about... Um, our top security agent, I'm sorry. The I'm game saying. show is leaking <laughs> <laughs> into our other content now. I love it. It is. Um, yes. So Noah posted about reclaims, uh, reclaim security update, something to do with, you know, our new policies around remote um, MySQL. And um, so that is kind of like an easy way for important information like that to get out to all of our subscribers, as many people as are on the list. Um, but then we're also able to post about some fun things like um, Marin posted, you know, just before that, her OER 24 conference highlights. So you can kind of see that. Um, we have uh, our case studies are published here. Case studies are like a quarterly thing that we do where we choose, um, you know, one, one topic from, uh, either something that we've done or something that a community member has done. And we kind of just go through it and tell its story so that, you know, the rest of the community can see um, what people are doing with us and also what we're, we've been doing ourselves. Um, and it's, you know, supposed to kind of be a narrative of how projects get to where they've been. Um, but you can also see we've got um, the mid-month the mid month, which is like a mini little bite sized newsletter, um, where you can see kind of the most basic of basic announcements um, and things to keep an eye out for that month, as well as things that are coming up. Um, so that's there. It's just like it's a really a, a, an opportunity for us to just 
chat more <laughs> with um, and, and ping the community a little bit. And um, it's relatively new too. We really only spun it up in, I think it was February, right? January. Um, it was January. It was, the, it was December. December. Technically wow. December, oh, but yeah. Things started to pick up more, I think. Actually, it's been pretty consistent. I don't know, either way. It feels <laughs> like it has been very short because um, we've just been, you know, time has been flying with it, I guess. Um, and we really enjoy it. And it's so easy for us to use. And it is, as you can see, easy to be like really consistent with it. And we love it. So. Yeah. And I mean, like, it's it's not like we've never had announcements like before, right? We, we, we did have a category on our main website for announcements, but this is kind of taken that place. And because it's a dedicated space, it allows us to integrate the email part of it, right? Like this is, we were thinking about sort of, for instance, the mid month, this is yeah. an email that's been around for a lot longer than this mm -hmm. blog. But at a certain point we're like, what, what aren't these, shouldn't these be in the same place? And we can even show yeah. later on too, like, um, Ghost can actually have more than one newsletter list. So you can have people subscribe to different things, uh, which is really cool. And we can, for instance, for the mid month, we have a different checkbox for those. So basically you can go in here and actually, let me just uh, log in. I think I have a, um, I think I have a, like on my personal email and account here. Yeah. Not gonna show the email part, but um, yeah. So I'm now signed in with my personal account. And if I click on the little account thing here, I can go in here and the, you know, someone can just go in and manage their, their subscription. So I can get, I can say, oh, you know what? I only want mid month emails or um, I only want these, right? So this is, this is a really nice kind of tool that we just said to sort of get for free by using ghost. Um, and I'm now realizing that I even did a blog post specifically about that. Cause I, <laughs> this is, how we should been a feature because one we of the other reasons probably. that we started doing this series is because ghost has added a lot of features since the last time we did it. But yes. yes. Right. Uh, Amanda, I interrupted I was, you. No, I was just going to say, this is a great feature. Definitely knew about it before right now. And, <laughs> um, it reminds me that we should go in and make sure that all of our other types or categories of um, posts are probably marked so, so that if folks want to subscribe to only security updates, for example, um, they'd be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, we definitely could break it out further. We could have sort of like, you know, right now we conceived of this as just one thing and then we added mid month to it. But now that we've done that, it may make sense to reevaluate this and go like, let's put a security one, let's do a general announcements and a mid month, right? Yeah. That maybe that's as far as we go for now, but um, that it's super nice. And this is, cr this whole unsubscribe workflow is actually kind of crucial, right? Like, so could could you do something like this in WordPress with plugins? Yes, there are plugins for WordPress that will let you do a newsletter. So it's not like Ghost is the only game in town. But the great thing is Ghost is very much designed for a newsletter. So this stuff is just how Ghost works. Uh, we'll, we'll, in the last episode of the series, we'll actually go through the Ghost backend and like set up a newsletter and stuff like that. Um, but it's it's not very many clicks. It's not very many steps. And most of these things are just kind of taken care of for you, which is really nice. Um, and, uh, and on top of that, the, the way that ghosts is to use to write is, is nice too. So the actual editor is, I mean, there's not a lot to say about it. I think it's somewhat similar to the WordPress block editor. Actually, uh, it's, it, it, it is missing some features from the WordPress block editor, but there's also some things that it does really well. Like I like that ghost has a specific focus on images where it will say like, put a caption and alt text, and that's all right it's, in line, which I really like. It's substantially easier to put alt text on an image in Ghost than it is, at least in my experience in WordPress. In WordPress, you have to go into the media library or you have yeah. to figure out how to open the media library pop-up or something like that. In Ghost, it is in the editor. Uh, you can't see it right here, but like if you just look at that picture that's up front and center, 
Mm -hmm. In the editor, there would be a little space underneath it that says, like, put your caption here. And if you don't, then it's empty. And then there's a little button next to it that says alt. And if you click that, it flips over to an identical space where you can put alt text. Yeah. And, and you know, it's not like it's um, terrible to do alt text in WordPress, but it's a little bit hidden. You have to, you the process in WordPress is you have to say, I want to put alt text on this image. Where do I do that? And you could probably figure it out pretty quickly once you've once you've done that, right? Once you've had that process. In Ghost, it's a little bit more in your face. It's kind of like Mastodon. When you post a Mastodon, there's like an alt text thing right there. And you can even set a preference in Mastodon that says, alert me if I forget to put alt text on an image. And those types of like accessibility minded features are awesome and is the kind of icing that Ghost likes to put on its open source cake, you know, like it, it is, I think, um, opinionated about its design in, in usually really good ways. So, um, but also when you do, when you write your post, um, you know, of course it's set, it can send them out as new, uh, email newsletters and they look great. They're very, very rarely is there a large difference between I'm, I'm sure I can't say there's never a difference. I I'm sure even we have run into an issue where something looked a little bit different in email format, but, um, basically you can write your blog post, hit the preview button and, and be assured that your email is going to look the same. Um, which is really nice, especially when we were using a different service for mid month that, you know, is affiliated with a primate. And sometimes <laughs> that those wouldn't look great um, when I would go to send them out and it would kind of be like a surprise. Yeah, <laughs> like, which is fascinating because that tool only does email. <laughs> yeah, I, yes, I don't know. Maybe I just wasn't good at it, but it, um, I would be sending multiple test emails <laughs> to make sure that things looked okay before yeah. actually hitting go. And I've never had to send a test email for this. Yeah, ever. perhaps I should be, but I never do on our blog. So no, I, I mean, there's so much. I, I think what the beauty of it for me is, is that it's so much simpler. Like there's not so many like, oh, you got to like toggle this thing over here and format this with this particular button block thing. Um, you have some some formatting options in Ghost, but it's really just like it keeps it simple for you. And there's not a lot of ways that it can mess it up um, or that you can mess it up in terms of design and formatting. So it, I think that's part of what makes it translate to email so well. Yeah. yeah. And then on top of that, you're using a good blogging platform for your newsletter, which is, I think, something people should do, right? I personally would not suggest you use an email only tool for your newsletter unless you have a I guess, completely subscriber only newsletter. Even then though, having folks have the ability to log in and see your newsletter in web page format is a really good thing, right? If you have to issue a correction or something or update something, you can just do it, right? You don't have to send out a second email necessarily, unless it warrants it, you know, unless you want to. Um, it also means people can find stuff and link to stuff later, right? So this was this was a thing that was always not great about the way we did the mid-month emails. It was like, well, that went out to people, but you don't really have a great way of referencing it later. Whereas now we can just easily go to our blog yeah. and and find the last mid-month email. Um, and actually, even we could use categories. I'm realizing right now that we I do have these categorized, but we could even put in the menu here mid-month emails and it would show you a list of them, right? Yeah, cards on the table. Um, I don't know how to work the tool that we used to use for mid-month. So I never added myself to the mailing list. So I never got the mid-month emails. Uh, and I can't go back and find them now because there is no archive. Well, um, it was also really hard to add people to the lists with the way that they were. I mean, you had like such limited you know, you were limited with your audience size and people would ask me on the team, like, Hey, can you add me to the list? And I'm like, I don't really know how. <laughs> um, so it was just, it's, it was, and again, here, self-service. It's ridiculously easy to add people yeah. self-service, or if you have like an import that you need to bring in, ghost is very good. Yeah. We'll, we'll show the back end way of this in a future episode, but the, the, good story here for most people is we can just now point them to 
and say like, hey, go to the blog.reclaimhosting.com, hit the subscribe button. It's going to ask you for your name and email. That's it. Like, it's very simple. Um, it's all integrated. And then people can also opt out. If they don't want them, they can also just go here and opt out or do it. There's, a, I think, an unsubscribe link in the email. But that's really crucial. Like, I mean, I... Uh, you know, I am an RSS fiend, so I don't actually want your newsletters in my inbox, typically, from, from other folks. I would prefer to receive them in my newsreader, right? Um, and so because this is a website, I can do both. You know, you can you, people can choose how they want to receive that information, which is really great. Yeah. So I, I think, I mean, uh, you... Now that we've kind of talked about a couple things, we've, we've kind of covered like what is Ghost, why we think it's important to use an open tool for newsletter stuff, you know, owning your audience, owning, not your audience, owning, owning the list of platform, you know, emails your, that yeah. is your audience and owning the platform that's, that's, um, uh, that you're using with that. And um, Next time we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, the technicals of getting all this stuff set up and the time after that we'll talk about how to use Ghost. But before we even get there, say you're following along at home, um, you do need to think about sort of what your newsletter is going to look like. What so how, what what are, where do we start there? Yeah. Um I can uh sort of take point on that. Um but basically this is something that we talked about a little bit in our last Ghost Flex course as well, but it's, it's something that I want to revisit and think about in part because we've talked about uh, Reclaim the Blog has a different focus and point than the Roundup, uh, and it didn't exist last time. And so now we have sort of a good uh, example of two very different things that use the same platform to achieve related but not the same goal. Um, and uh, basically, uh, this is sort of stepping away from Ghost as a platform and thinking more about what it is to start and to run a newsletter. Um, and some of this we'll get into in uh, one of the later sessions. Um, but as Taylor said, if you're following along at home, uh, maybe you've gotten this far and you've gone, wow, this all sounds awesome, but what do I, wh why would I, what, what would I do with it? I know why I would use it, but I, I don't know what I would do. Um, and so that's sort of where this theoretically comes in is thinking about what you want your newsletter to look like or to do. Um, and I've got, I've got links uh, from before somewhere saved in, Google Drive somewhere, uh, but essentially there's a lot of different types of newsletters and approaches. The Roundup is a collection or a collation. Um, we talked about that is, uh, you're only gonna hear from us once, once a month, but it's gonna have everything. So it's gonna be longer. Um, it's gonna be uh, more varied, um, maybe. We include a staff pick section because that's not our stuff. That's a collection of things that we found on the internet that we think are cool. I think the articles that you shared, Taylor, may have ended up in the January or February roundup. I don't totally remember, but that's our sort of way of saying, hey, we want to give you all of the reclaimed news and then bring you a little bit of the larger internet. Um, and I, I, I'm thinking now of old school blogs having like, here's a list, here's a list of links to sites that I like, um, just on the sidebar, nothing to do with what blogs I'm, what I'm blogging about, but here's a list of my recommendations. Um, but that's, it. uh, we have the announcements. Um, sorry, I do have, well, I pulled up notes somewhere and now I look like a chump because I had to reference that I have the notes. Uh, <laughs> well, but, one, one thing that, um, we recommended last time that I would, definitely recommend folks look at this time too, is this mm -hmm. post actually from Ghost themselves. Oh yeah, there it is. Um, That's the link. Called Six Types of Newsletters You Can Start Today. Yes. Thank you, Taylor. Yes, Taylor's correct. That is uh, the, that's what I used to base 
my session on last time. Um, but you can just see in the bar on the, on the side, there's reporting, analysis, curation, artistic, practical, hybrid, time sensitive. Um, the time sensitive one is actually interesting because it's not announcements uh, the way that we do it. It's the idea of this is something that documents a particular occasion or a particular period in time. This newsletter will only run for uh, three months while something is happening because that's only expected to last three months. Um, but the Roundup is a curation style newsletter. Uh, reporting seems pretty self-explanatory. Um, thinking about what it is that you want to be sharing and bringing to people is sort of the key. And we are using our announcements and resources uh, as examples, but there's also like, you can have a recipe newsletter, which I think is in this page somewhere. As an example, you put out a recipe once a week, once a month, something like that, something that you want to share. Um, there are, there's a newsletter on Substack that's going to end up in staff picks for the month of April uh, that is called Dracula Daily, uh, which is just the book Dracula is written in epistolary format. Every entry is a letter or a journal uh, or a newspaper article. They all have dates on them. And uh, the novel takes place between early May and early November, I guess. And so Dracula Daily comes out every year and they just put out whatever is dated for that day. So you experience it in that format for like six yeah. months. Which is, so it's a little bit, you could say that's a little bit artistic, but uh, time sensitive, right? The yes. novelty of that one is the time component. And and I think really what what you'll find reading this and, and also like a commonality mm -hmm. between that and Pilot's advice here is that having a recognizable format, even if it's not like you're literally spelling it out to your readers, but it should be evident by the content by what yeah. you're writing, right? Um, what your format is, right? It's literally for the roundup, it's curation. You can tell it's called the roundup. <laughs> it comes out once a month and the whole format is, this is all the stuff we've been doing. And even when it was brand new, we were always saying like, we do the roundup mostly for ourselves. <laughs> so we can be like, oh, cool. We did do all this this month. And like, that was really helpful for us, but also we hope for other people too. Um, and that that's a contrast to, um, or that that's a way to make sure that your newsletter is compelling in, in or or at least is something that people will understand. Like people aren't going to sign up to subscribe for something to show up in their email inbox if they don't understand what it is, right? Um, like a, a a great you know counter example to this could be something like my own blog which is like has no format no regular schedule is sometimes like here are my notes on this weird command line tool and sometimes they're like here's my thought about fatherhood right it's just like there's nothing in common but frankly that's it's it's not a newsletter i'm writing there for me really you know so that and that that's that for me is fun, but it is not going to lend itself to something that someone will be like, yeah, I do want one of these in my inbox every month, right? Because people don't know what they're signing up for. And that's fundamentally what they want to know. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point. Thinking about consistency of topic and consistency of form. It is how people can look at your newsletter and say, oh yeah, no, I understand what this is and I know that it's what I want and I'm going to sign up right now. Um, as opposed to people scrolling through and going, I don't really under what is, hmm. Mm -hmm. no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try and figure it out. I'm going to just go find a newsletter that I, I will just understand. Um, well, and especially because people, I, I think people aren't looking for newsletters and then yeah. finding yours and subscribing. They're finding your newsletter because, from some method, they know about you or your work or whatever, um, and then go, oh, this newsletter would be a great way to receive that, right? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not like people, it's not the same way as people say may watch Netflix, where they may like open the app and go, 
what should I watch? It's it's driven the other way around almost always with something like a newsletter, um, which is yeah, which which makes that stuff more important. Another thing I wanted to kind of mention here, just because I thought it was uh, a cool blog post that you put out, oh. um, was your workflow for like how you collect um, for the curation for for the roundup for our, our curation focused one. <laughs> Um, this little emoji hack, right? Where you just put the uh, particular emoji in Slack. And, you know, if someone's using Slack with a team and writing a newsletter, maybe they could do this. But I think maybe the, what's I think most useful here is the thought process you had here, Pilot, which is like, this needs to be for a curation-based newsletter, something that's an ongoing process all month. It can't be at the end of the month, we all decide to sit down and try to remember what happened, you know? Yeah, I did that for a couple months. Um, we don't do that It was probably a ton of work. Um, it wasn't great. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it, it's, it's, the roundup has also grown. Um, so the roundup used to be shorter. Uh, so it used to be less work, uh, but, Either the Roundup wouldn't have been able to grow without new workflows, or if it had grown, it would have been much more of a headache. Um, and that also uh, ties into something that I want to talk about and we'll maybe come back to, but is thinking about something that you can make sustainable for yourself. Um, so there's this workflow blog post that Taylor is sharing, um, but thinking about something that you can put out sustainably. So Dracula Daily puts out things that are of varying length. Sometimes they're very close together and sometimes they're very spread out because they're using a public domain novel that already exists. We put out blog posts on Reclaim the Blog. We aim to do it once a week-ish. If there's something that has to go out right away, it'll go out right away. Um, but those posts are usually pretty short and anyone on the team can write them or be tapped for them. Uh, we say, oh, Noah's got something to say, we can get that out. Um, but it doesn't have to be on one person. The Roundup is really big. Uh, it's four or five people every month. Um, we collect stuff over the course of the month. And then there's like a three-day period where we freeze any curation, any collecting of links, and we just write. Um, and that makes it sound like we're in a three-day lockdown, which we aren't. But... The point is that that's not something that we could do more than once a month. Oh um, yeah, it wouldn't make any sense. It wouldn't yeah. make any sense. So we have a sustainable pace um, for what we're making and for what we're telling people. If you got the roundup more than once a month, you'd be like, well, why do you have to send me 25 links every three days? This is terrible. Um, so. You know, so I, I think fundamentally our advice when you're thinking about a newsletter is you, you need to think about format. You need to think about, you know, um, time frame. So how often is this coming out? Because having a regular time frame is going to be a huge benefit for you in getting people to follow along. Um, and you need to think about your team and your process, right? Is this a one person thing? Is this a team effort? How are we going to split that team effort up? Our roundup sections work well for us now. They, you know, they weren't actually created. You know, at one point, Pilot wrote literally, I think, pretty much literally every word in the roundup, right? But that's not as much the case anymore. And so it's a little bit more natural for us to split these sections up and, and have individual folks work on them. So that really works for us too. So and it's it not like you have to make all these decisions and never change them. Totally. But you should start with some, <laughs> for sure. I was just going to say that that works for us because I think the entire Reclaim team has kind of gotten the same inner monologue um, and uh, writing voice over the the time that we've all spent together. We're getting it so, checked out. It's uh, We know it's weird. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a High kind of strange. I feel like it all goes too smoothly when we all write different, all of us <laughs> writes a different section, but it, it all sounds like one person wrote it. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's, the, that's the sign that we're keeping it simple. Well, um, and, and maybe there's something, you know, maybe maybe the, the tone setting, right? You, the, the first several roundups pilot 
wrote most of that sets a tone we were able to emulate that tone so that could be something too like if you are writing a really large newsletter and hoping to have your whole team do it maybe that means uh having a style guide or or having a couple that establish a tone that you all can work from you know technically speaking i think we do have a style guide somewhere um but i also wrote it mostly for me uh because yeah. i went through and went what am i doing i know i'm doing something but i have to explain it to myself to but understand it was also something that you had fun with and that translated to our readership but also to the rest of us and kind of working from that place of authenticity is i think what makes the roundup so successful and can make your newsletter successful too so bring it back sure you join us for the rest of the uh, sessions here in this flex course thanks for joining us for this first one we hope that it got you excited for what's to come and we'll catch you in the next one. Yeah. Bye. See you next week. Bye.